how to photograph the Perseids meteor shower step by step. Hello, Photopillar, Rafael the Bar here. In this video, you'll learn how to photograph the Perseids meteor shower 2021 peaking on August 13th or any other meteor shower in the future. Let's go! To plan your photo of the Perseids meteor shower, go to the Photo Pills planner and place the red pin on the location you wish to plan the shot. In my case, I have the red pin in the beautiful island of Menorca. Now, tap on the map settings button, you have it next to the plus button on the map, this one, and then the map layers, turn off the sun layer because you don't need the sun info to plan the meteor shower, and then tap on meteor showers to access the 2021 meteor shower calendar. On the calendar, just tap on the Perseids meteor shower to select it and go back to the map. Notice that the time bar has been set to the local peak date on August 13th, 2021, and also has been set to the local peak time, 5.09 a.m. Also, the Perseids meteor shower information appears on the time bar, on the map, and on the top panel. If I swipe to the panel to the left, until I get to the meteor shower panel, this one, you have all the key information of the Perseids meteor shower on this panel too. All this information will help us to really quickly plan our meteor shower shot. On the time bar, we have this kind of great area. This gray area represents the meteor shower intensity for the selected date and the selected time. It represents the expected ratio of meteors per hour. And you can read the meteors per hour for the selected time on the top panel. In this case, at the peak time at 5.09 a.m., the meteors per hour expected are 84.4, 84 meteors per hour. The gray area on time bar is awesome because it helps us decide when to start shooting and when to end shooting the meteor shower. For the Perseus meteor shower, I used to start shooting at the beginning when the meteors began to be active around 10 p.m. and I'll stop shooting around 6 a.m. It's when the sunlight invades the scene and the meteors disappear. This is the reason you see this big drop on the gray area that represents the meteors per hour. As you know, when photographing a meteor shower, the more time you spend shooting, the better. The more likely it is that you capture meteors. So for the Perseids, you should be shooting from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. Also on the time bar, you see the path of the moon. And as you see, the moon will be below the horizon all the night, which is great. The path of the Perseus meteor shower is also represented on the map. You see that as I move time, you see that the radiant moves along this great path that's on the map. This way I know where the radiant is at all time, which is key to plan my shot. But what's the radiant and why is that important? Well, the radiant of a meteor shower is that spot in the sky where meteors originate. You need to know where the radiant is at all time to decide where to frame. For instance, if you wish to create in post an image like this, where all the meteors appear to converge in one spot in the sky, they converge at the radiant, then you need to frame the radiant. By the way, if you wish to learn how to create images like this one, I recommend you to watch the super masterclass that Ian Norman gave about meteor showers and about the Versace meteor shower. It's an awesome class, watch it. Another option is to frame away from the radiant, 30, 40 degrees away from the radiant, to try to catch longer meteors. Great, now that I know my shooting time and where the radiant is at all time, I can choose my shooting spot. All I have to do is to move the red pin you see on the map to all the locations I know that have a really powerful subject. For example, the beach of Pregonda, this one, could be a great location. So I'll tap and hold on the map to place the red pin. And the Pregunta Beach is awesome because here we have a really beautiful rock formation. Here you have it, it's a spectacular, colorful rock formation. It's so cool. Now, if you want to frame the radiant and to shoot the radiant of the meteor shower with the rock formation, well, this location here could be cool. It works pretty well because the radiant moves above the rock formation. Another option is to shoot from here, to frame away from the radiant, frame the rock formation, but frame away from the radiant and try to capture long meteors. Just choose your shooting spot based on the photo you want, on the composition and on the position of the radiant. When you're in the field at the right pin position, 
use the night AR, the night aumented reality views, to visualize the path, the radiant and the path. The radiant, here you have the horizon, and here you have the Perseids radiant in the sky, which is awesome. I can drag my finger on the screen to change the time, to see how the radiant moves across the sky. And another cool thing that I have here is the moon, as you see the moon is below the horizon, the moon path, and also I have the Milky Way here, which is super great, and this is the Polaris. So yeah, take advantage of the elementary values and photo pills because they are awesome and they will help you understand, in this case, the position of the radiant in the sky. Well, this has been a really quick and short explanation of how to plan cool shot of the Perseus meter shower, but if you wish to learn more on planning meter showers, watch this video, it's a really, really detailed video on planning meter showers, watch it. Now, to photograph the Perseids, you'll need your camera, of course, a wide-angle lens to include a lot of sky in the photo. You can use focal lens between, for example, 10 millimeters to 35 millimeters. They are awesome. Short focal lens are great. You also need a sturdy tripod and head, an intervalometer to set the camera to shoot for the whole night, and to avoid to touch the camera, to avoid introducing vibrations into the system, because vibrations produce blurry images, so the less you touch the camera, the better. If your foreground is too dark, try to use a couple of LED panels placed right far away at a really low power to lead the scene, to lead the foreground. This will allow you to capture a really natural look in the foreground. Also, when photographing a meteor shower, battery power is super, super important. So the question is, how can you hit the camera to shoot for the whole night without having to worry about running out of battery? Well, to get rid of the battery problem, we used, in the ProBuilds team, we used the dummy battery connected to the case relay power system and connected to a power bank. Actually, not long ago, I recorded a whole video on the power system we use in the ProBuilds team. Here you have it. Watch it. What else do you need? Ah, yes. If you're shooting in a humid area near the sea or near a lake, use a heat strip band. The heat strip band will keep your lens warm to avoid moisture condensation on the lens. Avoid moisture condensation on the lens at all costs because most moisture condensation produces foggy images. And of course, you don't want that. Finally, another option is to use a star tracker to shoot a long exposure to capture more detail in the sky, to catch more stars. A star tracker is a much more advanced tool, so if you want to learn how to use a star tracker, I recommend you to watch Dan Thafra's masterclass. He gave a great presentation. You have the video, watch it. To photograph a meteor shower, we'll basically use the same settings we use when we photograph the Milky Way. On the big night, arrive at the location more or less one hour before the shooting time and set up the gear at the planned shooting spot at the red beam position. Attach the lens to your camera and set the focal length you wish to use depending on the photo you want. 10mm, 14mm, 24mm. Set the widest aperture you have available, f1.4, f2.8, and don't be afraid to push the ISO up to 1600, 3200, 6400, depending on the noise performance of your camera. Now it's time to make focus, but where to focus? Well, it depends on your taste. One option is to make focus on the stars, to get them stuck sharp but you'll lose a bit of sharpness in the foreground. Another option is to make focus on your subject, and if your subject falls behind the hyperfocal distance, then the stars will be acceptably sharp also in the photo. You can calculate the hyperfocal distance using the hyperfocal table included in photo pills. All you have to do is to set your camera, for example the Nikon Z6, and then read the hyperfocal distance depending on the focal length you're using and the aperture you're using, for example, with an icon Z6, which is a full frame at 14 millimeters and f2.8, the hyperfocal distance is 2.33 meters. If you wish to learn how to actually focus on the hyperfocal distance, watch this video. A third option is to focus stack. Take multiple shots for the foreground, focusing at different spots, so you make sure that the whole foreground is in focus. 
and then focus on the stars to photograph the meteor shower. And finally, stack all the photos in post. Let's continue. Shutter speed. I recommend you to use the shutter speed you use to photograph the Milky Way to get pinpoint stars. Once again, you can use photo pills to calculate the exposure time you need. Just use the spot stars calculator here. Then set your camera, for example, the icon set 6, the full frame, set the focal length to 14 mm, set the aperture to f2.8, set the declination of the stars to 0, and set the accuracy mode to default, and on the table read the MPF rule, which gives you the more accurate exposure time you need for the Milky Way, in this case, around 18 seconds. Then take a test shot with this exposure time, 18 seconds, and check that the stars are not trailing. Again, the exposure time depends on your taste. I recommend you to start with the MPF rule and then push it up or lower it depending on the results you're getting. White balance. Set the white balance to manual and if you're shooting on the really dark sky, set the white balance to 3900 Kelvin to capture the natural color of the stars. And if you're shooting under light pollution, I recommend you to set the white balance of 3400 Kelvin. Great, now it's time to take a text shot and adjust the composition. And check that the stars are not trailing, that the focus is right, and that the exposure is right using the histogram. Also, if you're getting a tool with our foreground, it's a good idea to use to let panels, as I said, to lead the foreground from the side. If everything looks good, set the camera to bulb and use the intervalometer to set the exposure time, usually between 15 and 25 seconds and set the time between two consecutive shots to one or two seconds. Of course, use a longer time between shots if your camera and your SD card cannot work at that speed. Finally, if necessary, attach the view heater pan to your lens. Press the shutter release button in your intervalometer and let the camera work for you the whole night. It's time to relax and enjoy the show. Now, if you wish to learn more on how to photograph meteor showers, I invite you to download our super detailed meteor showers photography guide. I'm going to leave you a link in the description of this video and in the first comment below. And if you like this video, give me a like, subscribe, and I'll see you next Wednesday in another video. And remember that you have the power to imagine, plan, and shoot legendary photos. Bye.